Having realized that climate change is the greatest challenge humanity faces, leaders across the world have called for urgent new policy measures to accelerate the shift to a low-carbon future. The AXA Group, a world leader in financial protection, wants to contribute to making a difference by investing responsibly. They have incorporated environmental, social and governance factors into over 89% of their investment activities across all asset classes. Today I'm speaking with Justin Travlos, Global Head of Responsible Investment at AXA IM, about how to create a long-term value for all stakeholders by delivering sustainable investment solutions. So welcome Justin Travlos on the set, nice to have you here. Can you please give us an overview of AXA IM Alts? Thank you Tina, it's great to be here today. AXA IM Alts is the alternatives investment arm for AXA investment managers. Uh, we're a French-based company. We have over 750 staff present in 16 offices globally, representing the interests of over 500 clients. We manage 180 billion euros in investments globally, um, comprised of about 85 billion in direct real estate, about 80 billion in private debt and alternative credit, and about 12 billion in infrastructure, private equity, and hedge funds. And what uh, differentiates AXA IM Alts from its competitors? Uh, we have four key convictions. Um, one is that we have for a long time been, uh, we've been driving the ESG agenda. And by that I mean the integration of both financial and non-financial metrics into our investment decisions. We see that as fundamental to making good investment decisions uh, for the long-term value of our, of our, our investors. Second is that we have a 360 degree view of our investment markets and that is that we invest across both equity and debt. We invest both directly and indirectly via private markets and listed markets including into infrastructure and long-term private equity. Third is our fundamental belief in proximity to our assets and deep understanding of the markets and sub-markets that we act within. With over 340 investment professionals in the business, we have 130 asset managers in 12 different countries, all active in their markets, supported by over 40 development professionals and an additional 40 transaction professionals, all seeking to find additional value for our clients and to manage on a day-to-day, asset-by-asset -asset basis, the targets that we've set for our business. Lastly, we have a very strong conviction around governance. We have a strong governance in place which allows us to align our business behind the targets that we intend to deliver and also to ensure that we manage any issues like conflict of interest between our various clients. And you also talk about three key pillars, decarbonization, um, resilience and building tomorrow. Tell us a bit how you incorporate those ideas into your work. When we speak about decarbonization, we speak about actively reducing emissions through better efficiencies in our real estate portfolios. We look at avoiding emissions through the generation of renewable energy, its distribution and management through grids, through our investments in infrastructure. And we look at sequestering emissions through our significant investments into forestry and nature-based solutions, acting as carbon sinks to be able to be active across the full carbon value chain on behalf of our clients and investors. If we look at existing stock specifically, um, one way to, let's say, make your portfolio greener is to divest uh, the less ESG performing assets uh, to someone, to make them someone else's problem, so to say. I understand you don't do that. That's correct. Yeah. Um, I think our approach is much more about active contribution mm -hmm. and less about reallocation away from, away from risk. Um, when we look globally at the uh, the demand for change in building efficiency and the requirements of the Paris Agreement target. Um, our responsibility is to act. We also see a significant amount of value in being able to transition buildings from poor performing assets to high performing assets that are fit for the future. And we have some fantastic examples of that within our portfolio. 
Mm -hmm. When we talk about real estate, uh, you say that it is in a state of uh, structural change due to the space as service concept. Tell us a bit about that. Fundamentally, real estate hasn't changed that much. It's still responding to the needs of its users across sectors and classes. There are four kind of four key areas um, where that's focused, and that is flexibility of use, convenience for the users, proximity to other like-minded users, and the amenity that's within that space. Um, those differ across sectors, be they residential or commercial, but fundamentally the focus has gone just from the real estate and the long-term lease to the consistency, convenience and demand for the, from the underlying users for that space. To what extent do your asset managers use PropTech? Increasingly. I think PropTech is an, an incredible space. It really is exploding at the moment. Um, and we, we utilize it in, in different ways across the portfolio. Um, some of it test and learn, uh, some of it more fundamental. Um, what it's doing to the industry though, is it's effectively rebasing what's possible from an operating asset. And so be it a full IoT network with uh, real-time data flows and the ability to um, predict better when plant and equipment needs to be changed and all of the savings associated with that, right through to the other end of the spectrum where in the social housing space, um, the, the ability to identify um, turning off of heat becomes an indicator for financial stress. So we see this as a, as a tremendous space to be highly active in and to be able to utilize to better understand our users, to be able to make sure that we can respond to them. If we come back to the topic of uh, sustainability, um, there was a time not so long ago where it was considered as a, as a barrier to progress. Uh, I think you take it more as an opportunity for progress. Um, would you consider yourself uh, being agents of change? Sustainability has been my interest for almost 20 years. And the value that I provide is the ability to translate uh, into financial terms why things matter. There's always been a discussion about cost and value. And being able to better articulate the value proposition is fundamentally what's changed in the last two years. There's no doubt whatsoever that regulations has put pace to, to the consideration of value. But our work in terms of being early adopters in the space to identify where that value is and to be able to deploy it at scale across our portfolios is a fundamental differentiator for us. What's your outlook on the future? Right now we are facing multiple challenges, uh, crises one might say, um, economic recession, we have uh, the climate change. Um, do you still have an optimistic outlook on the 21st century? I don't think there's ever been a better time to invest in the solutions that humanity needs. We have 103 months to halve global emissions and at the uh, COP26 last year, I think somewhere in the order of $130 trillion worth of capital committing to net zero. There's never been as much capital and there's never been as many minds applied to finding solutions at any time in history. So I'm, I'm incredibly optimistic from an investment perspective and from an opportunity perspective. But, is there a but? I think there's always a, there's always a but. The, the planetary system that we exist in is under significant threat and we need to act more quickly, more deeply and more permanently, and that requires personal change as well. As well. Yeah. That, that really is, so, it's so fundamental. And I think as humans, we know that change is hard, um, but ultimately the, the survival of our planet and our families and our friends and the things that we hold dear really relies upon that. Thank you, Justin Travelos, for this conversation. Thank you.